Welcome to uh, Mastering the Middle Game, my uh, the second edition. Today we're going to be uh, talking about restriction uh, and how to restrict our opponent's pieces, our opponent's plans. Um, first thing we need we need to do when we're uh, when we're talking about restriction is anticipate our opponent's plan. So this is a game between Anand. Anand is white. Uh, against one of the top American players, uh, Giada Kamsky. I'm sure you, you guys know about him. Um, my first question for you is, what is Black's plan in this position? Or better yet, what is the one piece that needs improvement in this position for Black? Thank you. Very, very good answer. The bishop on c8. That's his biggest problem. If he manages to get his bishop uh, on c from c8 out, then I believe black is absolutely uh, out of danger. So how many, how many plans does he have to get that bishop out? Two. You say two. OK. Which ones? b5 bishop b7 is the main one definitely because it also involves uh him getting his attack going on on the on the queen side what's the second one e5 with bishop e6 absolutely that's another one bishop d7 bishop c6 that's the third one so we have actually three plans uh in which blacks get Get out, uh, get out of harm's way. So, Anand was white. A Anand knew what he had to do. So let's try to let's try to find the best, the best move, and the best plan. In general, it, g4, g5, pawn storm on the on the king side, right? The problem is that, as I've said. If black manages to, uh, to get his bishop out, I actually think he's going to be the faster one. So Anand had to shift kind of his mindset in this position and, and, and try to go for a different... Queen b6, okay, what's, uh, what's the point of that move? e5 ideas, yeah? Uh, and that's exactly what Anand played, queen b6. Very, very strong move. Black hat has to take. He simply doesn't have anywhere else to go with the queen. Bishop takes b6. And uh, <clears throat> okay, let's, uh, let's calculate a little bit because it's not that easy. What if black plays bishop d7? Try to calculate all the way to the end because uh, black has some defensive ideas. Bishop d7, e5, knight d8. Hmm? Knight d8. d8. Absolutely, that's probably his main option. Uh, if he takes. After bishop d7, if you e5, if you take on e5, I'm simply going to take and um, at least a pawn up, right? Because probably the best move is knight d5, knight takes d5, rook takes d5, and uh, well, actually, I don't have to take rook takes d5 because now I'm going to play bishop c6, and you might have some problems with the g2 pawn. But what is a much better, much uh, stronger alternative for white? Bishop f3, absolutely. We're going to prepare to take the d5 pawn with the bishop, and that's not going to give our opponent any sort of counterplay, right? Very good. The question is, what happens after e5, knight e8? You have a few options. Um, try to... Try Try to figure out all your candidate moves because it's not that easy. E takes d6, what's the problem with e takes d6? 
Well, actually, if you if you take with the knight, after he takes d6, knight takes d6, I can play bishop c5. So, if you take, take with the knight, I'm going to play bishop c5, and I think you're going to lose a piece now. Yeah? So, the best move in this position is obviously bishop takes d6. Right now, f4 is hanging. So if you play, that's kind of the detail you cannot miss. If you miss, then you're, you're going to be in trouble. Black has absolutely no problems here. So Can maybe after knight e8, yes? After bishop takes d6, rook takes d6? Yes, that's an option. But after taking with the knight? Bishop c5, I can simply just move my knight. Uh, and that, that, was basi oops, that was basically just an exchange. Um, I don't think black should have any problems here. So, maybe a more precise way after knight e8. You have, you have candidate moves. Maybe they're not as obvious, all of them. So, try to figure that out. Very nice, absolutely. Bishop c5 is the only move that actually m keeps some advantage, uh, well, actually, a big advantage going on. Uh, you're going to win a pawn. If you take, you take. And uh, black pieces are still restricted. Yeah? This knight on e8 is, is now the, problem, uh, the problematic piece. You're also losing a pawn on b7, so the position is simply just lost. Um, bishop c7 was another option, but after knight takes c7, bishop takes d6, rook takes d6, bishop c6, uh, black's position is very, very safe. Yeah? So, very tricky move, bishop c5. Obviously, Gatakamski, being Gatakamski, uh, didn't play bishop d7. He played the move knight to e8. What is he preparing to do? Bishop d7 and bishop c6, right? So now we kind of have to abide by I think Steinitz said this. Uh, this. The side on the attack has to continue making strong, move, tr strong moves to maintain the initiative. So, once again, let's. Uh, what does your intuition say? How should we continue? Hmm? E5, absolutely. Again, we're continuing with our plan of restricting our opponent's pieces. It's a matter of one move. If you allow him to get his pieces out, all his problems are solved. So always, always try to keep that tight grip uh, onto the position when, when having this type of initiative. Despite the fact that this is the end game, um, this is not a static initiative. This is a dynamic initiative. You make one bad move, you lose it. So, absolutely, he played e5. Now, if, if black takes on, on e5, I'm simply going to take with the pawn. And how is this position? Hmm? It's pretty terrible for black. I mean, look at the knight. Look at the bishop. Look at the two rooks. His pieces are completely paralyzed. Yeah, All of them, almost. Uh, the only one that's able to sort of move is the bishop on e7, but not even that one, because if he leaves this diagonal, you're going to go bishop c5, and the rook on f8 is going to be lost, right? So he's not doing very well. He played the move d5. And this is another critical moment of the position. Once again, it's time we, we, we make a plan. So there are two ways of restricting our opponent's pieces. One of them is simply taking their squares away. And the other one is tying them up to the defense of, of other pieces, right? And uh, as you've mentioned, f5 and then bishop g4 is doing what? Mm-hmm. 
and you're also tying tying this bishop up to the defense of and the e6 pawn. Right, right. The bishop on d7. Oh, okay, again, he would like to to put his bishop on c6, then maybe play rook c8, knight c7, slowly, slowly. Excuse me. Get his bis his pieces out, and then once again, he's not going to have um, any clear problems. But yeah, after bishop d7. Well, here there are two moves. We can either take on e6 first and then play bishop g4, or we could play bishop g4 first. Uh, the question is, which one should be the better alternative? Why bishop g4 and not taking on, on, on e6? Thank you. Very nice. Uh, very nicely put. Yeah. If you take on e6, the problem is he's not going to take with the bishop. He's still going to take with the with the pawn, because otherwise his d5 pawn will be in big trouble. But right now his rook is much more active, right? So whenever you have whenever you have the option of keeping more pieces locked up, try to try to do that. Yeah, it's it's much better. Mo no, Ninety percent of the times is going to be uh, the right decision to keep the keep the tension. Is, is, is what we like to call it. So he played bishop g4. Gata played bishop to c8. A pretty difficult move to make, but uh, what was white's threat in this position? Yes, take on e6. And whenever, uh, whenever black takes back with the, with the f7 pawn, Knight takes d5, and the bishop on d7 is hanging. So he played bishop c8. A difficult move to make, but a necessary one. If uh, what if he takes on f on 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 f5? Mm, let's let's see. Knight takes d5, bishop g5. Bishop e3. Maybe I'm going to take, knight takes, and you're still having a pretty nice position. You are correct. Um, but maybe after, after bishop e3, I can do something else. Maybe take here. Take. And what if I play something like f6 here? It does look a bit strange, I agree. And you're probably still winning. But I have a feeling black is getting some sort of counterplay. I have a feeling he's, he's able to complicate uh, the position a little bit. Once again, I, I'm, I think white should still have the advantage. But there is a much more secure way of doing that in this position. I think bishop f3 is a much, much safer option. First of all, because you're keeping this knight locked. You're keeping all his pieces locked. And after bishop e6 or bishop c6, uh, we take with the knight on d5. This looks pretty bad for black. There's also no risk. There is also no risk. Yes, that's, uh, that's, an, that's another uh, important concept. Whenever you're, you have such a clear advantage, such a clear positional advantage, do you want to enter complications? Huh? Yes? I have a feeling that no. <laughs> no, you, you, you want to avoid complications at all costs, even if it wins material. Again, there are complications, and in complications you can miss certain certain uh, things, and then you're, you're in big trouble. Hmm? So I think bishop f3 is the much safer option. I'm pretty sure uh, Anand would have played bishop f3. Nevertheless, I cannot. I cannot guarantee that, obviously. So in this position, he played bishop c8. What now?
how to improve the position. Rook d4 might be a, a bad move because if you play rook d4, I'm going to play bishop g5 check, king b1, and then bishop b3. Or rook, f, rook, f1. rook hf1. Absolutely, absolutely. Slowly, slowly improve your position. He doesn't really have a clear threat, right? Uh, so why not bring your pieces to, to their best positions? Black played a5. Kind of a desperate attempt at freeing himself up. What to do now? Well, first of all, what's his, uh, what's his idea? Hmm? Rook a6, absolutely. Rook a6 is, uh, is, uh, is an important defensive idea. Maybe even a4, a3 to try to break um, white's pawn structure a little bit on the king side. Though the main, uh, the, main, the main idea behind a5 is obviously rook a6. All right. Kind of an important moment. White managed to find a way to, to, to keep black's, uh, black's pieces tied up quite nicely. Bishop back to e2? Mm, bishop back to e2 is an option. Um, Right, but if you play bishop e2, I'm going to play bishop d7. Because right now, as a consequence, you don't, have, uh, you don't have the action on this diagonal. So right now, you don't have f, take, f takes e6, f takes e6, knight takes d5 anymore. The bishop on g4 is securing kind of uh, your grip, yeah? So okay. I think uh, the bishop is still doing quite well over there. Let's try to think in, in a prophylactic manner. Candidate moves. A4? Interesting, knight to a4. What's, uh, what's the idea behind it? You have, maybe you have some, some ideas such as uh, bishop e2 or something like that, right? Um, yes, knight a4 is the move. And as, you, as you've mentioned, he has a clear threat right now. You're trying to increase the pressure on, on the e6 pawn with knight c5. If he, take, if he plays bishop takes c5, then bishop takes c5, and the rook on f8 is, is lost, right? So yeah, knight a4 is a very, very strong move. In this position? Yeah. Rook d3. I'm just wondering. Uh, rook a6. But what's the point of rook d3, right? Maybe you want to like rook lift on the third rank, maybe rook g3. Once again, you need to, uh, you need to kind of uh, choose um, a zone you want to kind of focus your forces on. Ninety four, you're kind of concentrating your forces on, on, this, on, this, on this zone, right? Especially the e6 square. That's his uh, weak, weak spot. Which one? In this position, right, uh, knight a4. Oh, okay. Bishop d7, knight c5. Yeah. And that's quite a, quite, quite a nice idea. Nevertheless, I'm not sure it, w it works. I'm starting to have ideas with bishop uh, with, with bishop b5. So maybe I can play something like this. Bishop b5. I think you're still doing better. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure how this position is. OK, you take on e6, obviously. And then maybe I can play something like f6. You did win a pawn. But I'm not sure if if that improved your position. I'm going to play king e7. I'm going to have some sort of blockade against, against your bishop. And um, the, knight can get out too. the knight can get out. Yeah, if you take on f6, I simply take with the knight, and my knight is, is free. So 
is definitely once again not something that you wanna you wanna do. You don't you don't wanna lose the grip on the position. You don't wanna simplify it as much. So rook d3 again try to keep your 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 options uh, and your forces focused on one yeah. one target rather than just yeah. kind of shifting focus uh, without any any reason behind it hmm? right so knight a4 he played knight a4 um, black doesn't really have a lot of options in a desperate attempt to complicate matters get some counterplay he played the move f6 all right the character of pos of the position is uh, is starting to uh, change there are new, new targets that might we might be able to focus our pieces uh, on. So, what are our options? Okay, he did play f takes e6, f takes e5. What now? Rook takes f8. King takes f8. Knight f6. So whenever you take on d5 with the rook, I have this, this idea of knight f6 hitting the bishop and the rook. Um, you always have to be careful. What are the consequences of the past couple of moves? Black has freed up, sure. And now there are there are different targets, new targets. Is the e6 is the e6 pawn uh, target anymore? No, because he's not there anymore. But there's a new target. Yes, c5 could be an idea. Nevertheless, we have to uh, we have to keep in mind that he is going to free his uh, his pieces quite quite quickly after knight f6. Yeah. Knight f6, rook, rook e8, and, and the whole dynamics might, might be changing quite fast. Mm -hmm. Knight f6 is a serious, uh, serious idea of blacks. So we have, to, um, we have to prepare a counter or reshift our focus. Once again, the consequences of the past few moves. Um, there, is, there is a new target, guys. The d5 pawn. We cannot take it with a rook. Because of uh, of knight f6 idea. Okay, w if we take rook yeah. takes d5 directly, the rook on f1 is hanging. But now we shift the knight back to c3, right? These are um, practically the difficult decisions. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes we face. We 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 go one way, and then and then the whole situation changes on the board, and then you have to uh, shift your pieces back. Right, right. Because now, if you play, if you play knight f6 directly, I can just uh, simply take on d5, and that's just going to be a pawn up, right? And actually, my my rook is penetrating on the d5 as well. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. So if he does knight takes knight. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then you have to change the rook back. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Problems for him, right? Uh, he takes with the king, we take on d5, one, two, too many targets, yeah? And you're, you, you, you still cannot develop your pieces, so there is a serious problems black is facing in this position. He's completely lost. So in this position he played bishop g5 first. 
king b1, knight to f6. Critical moment, once again. What to do? We have a few. E7 is an alternative. E7 is a candidate move, uh, absolutely. But is it, is it the best we can do? Maybe not. And if not, why? So first of all, why is E7 not an appealing continuation? How is this position? I don't know if it's good for black, but it's definitely an improved version than what he had. Um, with two bishops, the pair of bishops, an open center, and, and, and these two very, very attractive pawns, very dangerous pawns as well, uh, d4 might be coming. Your pieces might be um, drawn back, and, and, and I think white is going to face some difficulties uh, converting this. Uh, we do not want that. We do not want to give, to give our opponent any chances, any extra chances. So let's look for, uh, for different alternatives. Bishop c5, I think you're actually helping me. Um, helping me put my rook on e8, attacking your e6 pawn. Why would you want to help me? You probably don't. I think I've heard a suggestion at the beginning. Knight takes d5. Okay, that's a that's a critical uh, that's a critical move you cannot really miss. So let's start let's start calculating that that idea. Obviously, what's what's Black's response after that? Knight takes g4. Takes takes your piece. If he takes on d5, you can simply just take uh, take on f8. King takes f8. Rook takes d5, and this is a, an obviously winning position. Yeah. The bigger question is what happens after knight takes g4. And we have to calculate it from here because this is where you make the decision. This is where you play knight takes d5. You cannot play knight takes d5 without um, accurately calculating all the complications after knight takes g4. Hmm? So knight takes d5, knight takes g4. E7, e7 interesting move, okay. Um, let's say I play rook e8 after e7. I think it's the only move actually. Knight c7, and how is that position? Mm -hmm. How does that position look like? That looks winning, right? Yep, uh, that's one of uh, one of the winning ways. E7, rook e8, knight c7. <coughs> Which bishop? The bishop on c8 doesn't have moves. One, still, it doesn't have moves. Uh, that is the problem. You could try playing something like bishop e6, but I think we can simply just take on a8. Yes, yes, yes. That is that is also an option. Yeah, I, I think you have a lot of options. To be honest, at this point you're already winning in a lot of ways. Uh, knight takes e8, I think, is winning as well. And after after this, maybe rook d8. Um, I think there's plenty of ways in which White wins this position. But Anand, for some reason, he didn't play e7. 
he played rook takes f8. Oops. Rook takes f8, king takes f8. How to continue? Once again, I, I feel like we have to calculate it all the way through. Bishop c5, king g8. He played knight c7 first. OK? And now rook to a6. Now this is another critical moment of the game. We have, we have several options, and only one of them well, I think only one of them clearly wins. The other ones just give a slight advantage. And it's Bishop all... Five, okay. Okay, so bishop c5, I go king g8. Uh, there is knight a6 in this position, which is the obvious move, and there is bishop c5. Which one is the correct one? And why? Bishop c5 first. Why? Because the knight controls g8 first. Maybe a lot of but to e8, bishop c6 first. Okay, very nice, uh, very nice nuance you found over there, yeah. So after bishop c5, king g8, how do you continue? How do you win the game? Then knight takes a6. B takes a6. E7. E7. And that's game over. And well, if you just just as an example, if you take on a6 first, and then bishop c5, now I have the extra option of playing king e8, right? I go king e8, and this is actually not so not so uh, not so clear. I have two pieces. Okay, you still have. Uh, uh, an active an active position as white but it's far from over yeah bishop d8 here knight f6 or maybe bishop e7 no but this is uh this is pointless yeah i i mean you, you go in this position, you see bishop c5, you see that he has to go king g8, and after knight takes a6, b takes a6, e7 wins on the spot, so uh, you go for it, yeah? But this was the last kind of trap that Anand had to, uh, to avoid, and he did. He played, uh, he played bishop c5, knight takes a6. Kamsky played bishop, bishop takes e6, knight c7, bishop f5, h3. Uh, the position is completely completely winning. And rook f8, king h7, bishop d6, knight d4. Kowski continued to play for a little bit, but uh, it's pretty easy, uh, it's pretty clear. White has absolutely no problems converting this king e3, and he resigned. That was it. Uh, if you guys want to try to uh, restrict right now, I have a position for you to play, whether you want to do that, like a blitz maybe, or something like that. A position between Richter and Tarash. This would be the position. You guys wanna wanna play it out, or you wanna look at uh, try to solve the example, try to s try to go through it? Is uh, is black to move? What do you think? Actually, let's make it like this. Absolutely, we're talking about restriction, so yes, we do have to restrict. Uh, white species. He let let's go through it because we don't have that much time. Uh, he played c5. Knight g3. How to continue? Continue with the restriction. 
I think f5 is a blunder after h3. And this guy were, is going to fall, right? So he played h5. Restrict this knight, right? f3. Hmm? The knight is going to go there, but that's not going to help him that much. Uh, because he's going to, uh, to get kicked out via f5. So for example, if you go right now knight e4, I think I'm not even going to play f5 directly. I'm going to play h4. First taking, taking your, uh, your square on g3. Now I think I'm threatening to go f f5 and simply capture your knight. So the knight the knight on e4 it looks good, but it's going to be kick, kicked out quite fast with after f5. So that's not what he did. He played f3. Bishop d7, rook e2. How to continue? Just play normal move, guys. b5 b5 restricting the other knight we don't have to actually hurry uh, because uh, i mean h4 probably would have been as good as b5 no 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 he's not he's not very concerned uh, that's what he did but the bishops control the entry squares quite well on the e file so he's going to put his rooks there, but he's not going to, uh, to do much more than that. Bishop f8. Now all, all, all the entry squares are controlled, right? He has nice rooks on the e file, but he cannot do much with them. So um, knight e4. What now? King g6, interesting idea. Yes, that's 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 definitely that's definitely part of his plan. Uh, he he played rook g8. The same idea, to play f5, to defend the g5 pawn, um, to play to play f5, but he wants to keep his king on f7. He's closer to the to, to, to the center, right? It, it, it controls the position a little bit better. So he played rook g8, knight b3. What to do now? Restriction. Normal move. Rook c8. Just defend the c5 pawn. Uh, we don't want to play c4 or anything like that. It's kind of pointless to do that now. Uh, we're not we're not ready yet. Yeah, c4. I. I he can just simply take on d4. And uh, I think we're losing a lot of the advantage. So he played rook c8. Knight e d2. Bishop d6. Knight e4. Bishop f8. A little bit of torture. A little bit of... <laughs> time yes, time control management. Yeah, a little bit of... Maybe I'll give you the draw. Oops, I'm not going to give you the draw. Uh, Yes, exactly, exactly, and that's his. Uh, that's Black's point as well. I, I did that many times. You know, it's very frustrating for the opponent, and I was the subject of people doing that against me, and it is very frustrating. He played the f5. Continue pushing, pushing the pieces backwards. Rook e5. What now? You want to get active? No, 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 no. Go back. Rook e2. What now? If, if, if you play rook d5, rook d well, what's happening? Rook g6. Yep. Rook g6. Uh, and the rook on d5 is going to be, to be lost pretty soon. I'm going to go rook f6, defending the f5 pawn, and then bishop c6 you're going to have problems, right? Uh, so he decided to go back. Rook a8. We want to push a5, continue restricting the pieces. Knight a5. What now? He 
be careful, be careful. Don't give your bishop c7. <laughs> no, I don't think you want to do that. After rook e7, you might have some problems. Um, actually, maybe even knight b7, to be honest. Two threats. I think you're starting to lose the game. Uh, it's the beginning of your downfall. So no, not bishop c7. Rook a to b8, of course. Restriction. Knight b3. H4. Are we in a hurry? No, we're not in a hurry. Give your opponent some uh, some hanging rope. You know, let him let him make some mistakes. You know, don't don't try to find. You know the the the, the winning uh, variation. All the time, just play normal moves, improving moves. King H1. Rook g6, king g1, bishop to e6, as the arrows are pointing out, the king wants to transfer on this side, and then at some point we're going to try to play for a5 or c4, one, one or the other, we're going to see which one works. Rook f2, rook a8. Rook e2. Mistake. What should he play in this position? Hmm? Let's calculate. Because black had some ideas as well in mind. Knight a5 is, is, is probably the best move. Um, I think black's plan in this position was to play this, and then bishop f4. Um, but this might have given white some, some extra chances. After knight c5, bishop e3, something like c4. I mean, you're still going to have a clear advantage with, with black. Uh, you're going to get that that exchange but white is getting some counter chances and i think this would have been uh the much safe not not safe or comfortable way for white to play yeah uh instead he chose to play rookie two and now he started black started the final squeeze a5 knight b1 looks pretty bad right a4, knight d2. Let's look at. Let's look at his knights for just a second. Okay, what now? Let's come up with a plan. Probably a lot of ways. Probably a lot of ways are working in this position. If we play g4, g4 uh, is what you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we could try that. But whenever we play g4, he's going to take on g4, and he's going to open up the f5. So, m and also, and also, he's going to get. If you move your pawn from f5, if you take on g4, he's going to get the e4 square for his knight. That's definitely something we don't want. Um, so. While, while an offensive on the king side looks quite uh, appealing, I don't think it's the best, the best version you can, uh, you, you can get. You have much better plans, much more accurate plans. Hmm? Mm, why bishop f4? If you go bishop f4, I go knight to f1. C4, absolutely. Why not? Why not an offensive on on the queen side? That's where he has 
uh, the least control of the position, yeah? And, uh, and your bishop are kind of pointed out uh, towards that side of the board. Why not take advantage of it? He played, a, he played c4, of course. Knight to f1. Rook to c8. He wants to kill his knight. He wants to completely kill his knight. King h1. c3. b takes c3. What now? Finish, uh, finish uh, white off. F4, you're once again giving him squares. I'm going to go knight g4, knight e5. I will say thank you very much. Don't give your, your opponents uh, squares. I think it's time we, we, I think it's time we go for some material in this position. And there is a clear way of just It's a move, but I don't think <laughs> it, I don't I don't think it's a good one because I just take on f five. Right. It's legal, yes. Uh, white, white's worst piece. The knight on b one. Can we get to him? B4? Why not B4? And, and that's that. That's that. Game over. You're going to take on B4. I'm going to take on, uh, on B4 with the bishop. A3, A2. The, the, best you, the best you will be able to do is actually just sacrifice the knight for the pawn. But that's going to be game over. Yeah? And it's the simplest move. Yeah? Um, it, it might be practically challenging to make such a move because you're exchanging a pawn and maybe you don't want to exchange pawns. You want to kind of keep um, tension and, and, and keep as much material on the board as possible. But sometimes, you know, um, when we improved our position to the maximum, we have to go for the material. We have to convert uh, that, that, you know, that strategic advantage into a more uh, palpable one right which is the knight so yeah after b4 several moves later he resigned but um there is no need to see more than, than yeah it's just a matter of plan here y you have to realize the only way to to push his pieces back is with with your pawns yeah and he doesn't really have a way to respond to that so this is very good because right the bishops can control both sides very very well and, and also, I think an important part of this game is realizing that him uh, doubling up on the e-file doesn't do much. Yeah, not surprised because it looked like that was strong. Right. It looks like he does something. Yeah. But I'm just going to push my, put my, pawn on, my bishop on f8, my bishop on d7. And, and both ways, that was exactly, exactly. And then I'm going to play h4, f5, and then my rook on the sixth rank is going to, uh, to, to swing and, and support the further expansion on the queen side yeah just expand your pawns right this is a this is a very nasty position for white very difficult to play yeah so uh, but you also have to be careful like don't hurry you hurry you give your opponents uh, squares and that's going to cost you 